So now that I've got the flood coolant system installed on my bandsaw, it works great as long as the temperature is warm enough that the liquid flows. It's water based. I think it's a 8 to 1 ratio. So it's mostly water. In fact, you can see even in the hose here, or even after I drained it, there's ice in the hose. So I'm going to install a uh, heating system for my coolant tank <laughs> just to keep it probably above 45, something like that. I have a, the exact same system that I'm going to install on this installed in this cabinet. You can see the thermostat there. This cabinet is insulated and heated and uh, it stays at a minimum of 55 degrees um, as you can see even though it's only 30 something degrees in the shop. So that's the plan. So I have to um, detach that middle shelf again and this time all I can do is just push it up out of the way, disconnect the drain hose, the drains back into the tank, and uh, see if I can get that tank lifted up enough to tape the heat tape to the bottom and then put a piece of rigid foam insulation under that. So this is the thermostat. I've used these thermostats now on multiple projects for this uh, exact same purpose with the exact same heat tape and it works great. Um, one of the things I need to check and I'm pretty sure it is that this uh, temperature probe that comes with it can actually go down in the liquid in the tank. It should be, I think it can. I've only used it in dry installations up until now. I'll put links to these uh, parts in the description. So, yep, so here's the thermostat. My buddy Dave sharpened my pocket knives and they are incredibly sharp. He's uh, getting ready to start his own YouTube channel doing uh, outdoorsy stuff, hunting, fishing, that kind of stuff. He's uh, really into that stuff so when he gets that channel up I'll post a link in my one of my videos. <clears throat> And this is the heat tape. This heat tape from a company called Brisk Heat is designed for industrial applications. Um, I believe, I don't remember the, uh, well here's the specifications. So this one is up to 572 degrees Fahrenheit. So that ought to do it. I like this particular one because it's nice and flexible. 
comes in all sorts of different lengths. This one is four foot, so I'll loop it back and forth on the bottom and tape it in place with uh, sort of that aluminum tape. <coughs> and the leads I guess that includes the lead part here. So, now in any event, that ought to be enough to make two or three loops on the bottom. I'll cut off these uh, little ties. These ties are intended to be used if you're wrapping it around a pipe or something like that. And then uh, the other thing I like about these is the uh, electrical plug. You just uh, got dovetails, you just slide it together and then plug it into the thermostat. So really just plug and play. Like I said, I've used this uh, same system. This will be the fourth installation. I used one on a, on a uh, parts washer that I kept heated to. Well, I didn't keep it heated, but when I was using it, I would heat it up to about 100 degrees. Um, so that the uh, it worked a lot better uh, with hot liquid. I uh, made a heating plate that uh, an ice maker sits on that's out in my buddy's man cave that gets really, really cold when, when we're not in it so that the uh, little tubes in it don't freeze. My heated cabinet I just showed you and now this tank. So let's get started. I've already drained the coolant tank um, as much as I can. I just used the pump itself and pumped the coolant into these two uh, five gallon buckets you see over here. So <clears throat> let's get this shelf cleared off. So I'm just going to unscrew these things and push this shelf up out of the way so I can get down to the tank down there. So uh, yeah, I don't know if you can you see if I can get a better angle. on this. As you can see, there's not really much clearance down there, so in order to lift that tank up, I have to move that shelf. So I'll get those things loosened, get that out of the way, and then we'll uh, get the tape on. Alright, so I've got the upper shelf pushed up, hopefully enough out of the way, and uh, looks like, yeah, this is empty, so I'm just going to disconnect the return line from the tank. All right, so the tank has a baffle in the bottom, which I'm assuming it, it splits the, um, the tank in half between the return line and the pump. <clears throat> so I'm assuming it's there to capture any 
chips and shavings and that kind of stuff will fall into the one side and won't get into the pump or anything. I put a separate uh, filter on it as you can see so I'm not terribly worried about that but uh, because of that I couldn't get all of the liquid out when it was sitting flat so I had to rock it a little bit and get the uh, some more of the, the coolant over into the other side of the tank so uh, I could finish draining it. You can see it's barely coming out. It's uh, The hose has got frozen coolant in it so it's moving a little faster now that it's starting to flow. So as soon as I get more of the coolant drained out then hopefully I can tilt the tank not all the way on its side but more on its side so that I can get to the bottom a little easier. And there's already a hole in the top of the tank. You can see it there, uh, which I assume is just a vent, um, although the tank is not sealed. When I tilted it a little bit too far on its side, liquid was coming up around the, uh, the edges here. So I'm just going to stick the temperature probe down in that hole, and that should be fine. And then I'm going to mount the thermostat to the back side of the saw so that it's not in the way but it's still easy to get to. So the only <clears throat> unfortunate thing about that in this whole situation is that means I have to keep it everything plugged in so that that thermostat can uh, keep the coolant from freezing all winter. So I'll come back when uh, it looks like I've got more of the coolant out and we can see about getting the heat tape installed and getting the rest of this thing done. All right, so I couldn't really film this, but there's nothing magical about it. I uh, simply used aluminum tape and taped the heat tape, uh, yeah, tape to the bottom of the tank, and then I cut a piece of foam with the uh, <coughs> aluminum side on it uh, to. Uh, help insulate the bottom and keep the heat going up and it's a tight enough fit there between the legs that I'm just gonna leave it press fit and I think I'm done I'm just gonna uh, put it back in mount the <clears throat> thermostat to the side here and we should be good to go all right I've got the tank heater installed I decided not to mount the thermostat on the side. I just it's sitting on top of the, the tank. There's plenty of room there. So you can see the top value is going up. That's the current temperature inside the tank. We've got the probe going down inside the tank, so it's in the liquid. And um, it started out at 34 degrees. I've got it set to 50. And you can also set the differential on when it will turn on. So it'll drop down to 45 before it turns on. And it'll go up to 55 before it turns off. You can adjust that. Um, it comes factory set to one degree differential. But I don't need uh, that precise. I don't need it turning off and on that often. So it's heating the tank up. Let's see how it shouldn't take too long. It's looking like the rate it's going to get to 50 degrees and then we'll see how the coolant flows. Well that's all I've got planned for modifications to this bandsaw for right now anyway. Um, I do have to say I'm very pleased with the results. It's very convenient to use now, very easy to use. Um, I like the flood coolant. It doesn't put gummy mess all over the uh, the blade and the tracking wheels and the the guide wheels and everything um, and um, yeah so I think it worked out uh, just the way I'd hoped um, again as you can see I've got my uh, email address there if you'd like to contact me about anything or feel free to leave a comment and if you would subscribe I would appreciate it and uh, everybody uh, take care bye